Welcome back to Red Tech. I'm Nate, and today we're focusing on Red Code RAW. Now, Red Code RAW is the technology that enabled us to easily capture 4K images on the Red One back in 2007. Fast forward to today, it's proven itself to be even more relevant for managing massive detail and higher resolution imagery. If you're not talking about data rates and file flexibility when choosing your camera for your production, it's, it's really not too late to start. The more we can help you understand Red Code, the better prepared you'll be for discussions with Post to make decisions like shooting 8K instead of 4K and to ultimately save you money. If you ask most people what Red Code is, chances are they'll tell you it's a compression that you choose on the camera in the form of a ratio, so like 5 to 1 or 8 to 1. You hear the word compression, you typically think smaller file sizes. But with Red Code, it's actually about enabling higher image quality and giving you more control. If storage is limited, you can achieve smaller file sizes than ProRes, yet retain all the benefits of RAW. Alternatively, if image quality and efficiency are a priority, you can have similar file sizes as 4K ProRes, yet record far more detailed 8K imagery. Ultimately, you can choose whichever Red Code setting best fits your workflow. Let's first outline the highlights and then actually look at some visual examples to clearly illustrate the benefits in both quality and efficiency. Number one, Red Code records raw data to maximize image fidelity and post-production flexibility. Two, it provides us with a tunable file size for superior image quality and lower storage requirements than other codecs. Number three, it enables a raw workflow with non-destructive editing, which is fully supported by all the major post-production software packages, such as Adobe, Apple, Avid, Resolve, and so on. Number four, it stores a ton of additional metadata, giving us a window into how the image was shot. And lastly, there isn't another camera on the market that has all of these capabilities. So, to put things simply, it allows us to record 4K, 6K, and even 8K onto something as small as an onboard SSD, like our Red Mini Mag or any other Red Media. This means manageable file sizes while maintaining image quality and raw flexibility. So on camera, the compression ratios are quite simply based on the comparison in size from an uncompressed file to its new file size. So Red Code 5 to 1 is compressed 5 times to 1, 8 to 1, 8 times to 1, and so on. Often the initial thought is to shoot the lowest possible option or even ask for uncompressed. If we were to capture uncompressed data, a single 480 mag would be full in like 80 seconds. Red code is very efficient. Just because you can shoot the lowest doesn't mean that you should. In general, the more resolution that you feed a codec, the more efficient that codec becomes. With red, pairing this efficiency with our 8K resolution is an incredibly powerful combination that is unmatched in the industry. At a certain point, the visual gains at lower compression ratios are negligible, and all you're doing is increasing the rate at which you fill your drives and increasing the time to transfer all your data, both of which are ultimately gonna cost you more money. So, how efficient is Red Code? Let's see how an R3D, which is Red's file name and extension, stacks up to some other common codecs. First, we'll look at a 4K ProRes 4444 next to an 8K R3D at Red Code 9 to 1, both of which are at 24 frames per second. These two files have a similar data rate, close to 135 megabytes per second, but the R3D has significantly more resolution. When we punch in and compare the fine detail, or lack thereof, the difference is clear. This is the easiest way to illustrate the performance of Red Code, and all of this gives you infinitely more flexibility in post. For our second example, we'll compare a 4K ProRes 422LT to a 4K R3D at Red Code 7 to 1. This time, identical data rates and resolution. But when we have a closer look, the macro blocking artifacts are non-existent on the R3D, and we can still pull detail out of the shadows. Now that we've had a quick look at the visual differences, here's a general comparison of the data sizes from some other common codecs, most of which can actually be made from the smaller R3D file itself. Now one of the most common questions, what red code should I use? Well, there isn't an end-all be-all answer to this, but we can help guide you towards a good starting point. As usual though, it's best to run your own test to familiarize yourself with different red code settings. I'd recommend shooting a high detail, high contrast image where everything's in focus, as well as maybe something like a talking head with lower detail and a shallower depth of field. Shoot each at various ratios, like maybe three, six, 10, or even 14 to one, and then have a look. I think you'll be surprised by the results. The next thing to look at is what resolution you're shooting on. When shooting at 6K, I target five to one as my starting point for high-end work. On the other hand, at 8K, 
I set my starting point closer to eight to one. This is a key point to make, which helps us combat a very common misconception that 8K would require a huge amount of storage. Because of red code and oversampling a higher resolution than scaling down, that is simply not the case. There's a great tool on red.com called Red Tools that will help you calculate your average data rate and estimate your max record time. Weapon 6K Dragon at 5 to 1 is about 146 megabytes per second, where Helium 8K at 8 to 1 only puts us at 162 megabytes per second. That's only about an 11% increase in data rate, but a 78% increase in pixel count. Another factor, what is your final delivery? If you're targeting the big screen or intend on pulling stills, you'll probably want to aim for a lower red code ratio. Whereas content intended for TV, web, or maybe streaming can target a higher ratio, reducing the amount of overall data. And finally, are you shooting high speed? There is a data rate ceiling at which you can only write so fast to a card. You have to balance your resolution, frames per second, and red code within that ceiling. Fortunately, the camera does this for you, but for instance, if you want to shoot a higher frame rate, you may need to lower your resolution and increase your compression ratio. So in conclusion, while large files are scary, red code isn't. In fact, it's the solution. It's an incredibly versatile and efficient technology that allows us to record very high resolution raw images onto a RED Mini Mac and provides a great deal of flexibility regardless of your production and post workflow. There you go, RED code. All right, that's it. Let us know if there are any additional topics you'd like us to cover in future RED Techs and we will see you out there.